You don't want to have a big cortisol sandwich right in the middle of your fast. It's just going to mess everything up. And that's exactly what working out in the middle of your fast is going to do. Look, I don't want to just be a negative Nancy. Like, I'm all about the nuancey stuff. And I know sometimes it's frustrating because I throw these little things out there that I learn, but it's all about you being the best version of yourself and taking something new each day and applying it. So what is this all about? Aren't you supposed to work out during a fast? Don't you get more benefit? Yes, 100, 100%, you absolutely do. But there is a very big difference between working out at the beginning of a fast, working out at the end of a fast, and then working out in the middle of a longer fast. Now, again, sometimes you just don't have a choice. And I'm not saying it's going to be the end of the world, okay? But especially if you are a beginner, this is directly applicable. If you are more seasoned and an experienced faster, I still want you to listen to this video and pay attention because you're gonna learn something. But then towards the end, I will give some practical stuff for something more advanced, okay? So what happens is this. During a fast, your cortisol levels go up. It's just normal, okay? Look at the chart that's on the screen right now. During a fast, yeah, you have this pretty significant increase each day of a fast. So if you're doing something longer than 24 hours, you'd expect your stress response and your cortisol levels to go up, pretty normal, okay? Now, what we don't wanna do is combine these super high levels of cortisol with additionally high levels of workout stress. But isn't more stress good? Don't we get adapted to that? Absolutely, okay, but you have to look at how adaptation occurs. With any kind of stress response, you have what's called the general adaptation system, which I've talked about in other videos. The general adaptation kind of process suggests that you have an acute stressor, and when you have this stressor, then your body has this sort of like restabilization, rejuvenation phase where it like adjusts to a said stressor. And then if you go too far, you go into what's called an exhaustion phase where you actually negate the benefits that you had from adapting to that stressor. It's sort of an adaptogenic response within the body. Okay, now, if you are training at the end of a fast, like right before you break your fast, sure, you're training in a pretty highly stressed state, but you're also breaking your fast right after your workout, which immediately brings your cortisol levels down. As soon as you consume food, your cortisol levels do come down. Okay, now granted, you can make the argument that stress and all this is going to bring cortisol levels up. Yeah, it is. If you're a stressed out individual, your cortisol levels are probably high whether you're fasting or not, but it's still all relative because during a fast, they're going to be exponentially higher. The moment that you eat, at least the fasting-related cortisol levels are going to come down. Okay, so training at the end of a fast is ideal because you're getting huge fat burning effects by training in a cortisol-driven state. And then after your fast, you're breaking it and you're consuming protein that your body absorbs. Okay, great. What about in the beginning? Don't you tell us to work out in the beginning of a fast too? Yeah, I do, a lot of times, okay? And again, it depends on the length, but let me put it like this. You don't have crazy high levels of cortisol at the beginning of your fast yet. So even though you're working out and you're driving your cortisol levels up, well, yeah, that's fine because you're not starting at a baseline high. Even though after your workout, at the beginning of a fast, you're not eating and your cortisol levels could continue to climb up, sure, but at least you're not starting at this super elevated point already, okay? You already get other benefits that are gonna offset that, i.e. growth hormone response, everything like that. But exercise right smack dab in the middle of a fast that's where the whole intro came in, the cortisol sandwich, right? You're starting with high levels of cortisol because you're already in a fast. Then you're working out, okay, and you're having more cortisol from a workout. And then you don't have any food at the end of that because you're in the middle of a fast. You still have another 12, 24, 48 hours to go or whatever. And then that's just going to drive cortisol levels up even more. So does that mean that you're not going to get a benefit? Well, I mean, it kind of comes back to stuff I've talked about in other videos, but if you start driving that cortisol response too high, it's going to impede your ability to break down belly fat. And it has to do with visceral fat. It has to do with glucocorticoid receptors. Long story short is you'll start burning fat from your extremities and from other areas of your body and actually keep it in your visceral fat and your belly region, which is not what we want. So when should you work out? I mean, ideally, like you should work out at the beginning of your fast and or at the end of your fast. But what if you're doing a longer fast where you have multiple workout sessions that would fall in between? Well, I would honestly say that you probably want to just keep your workouts mild, keep it low intensity. Okay, that way you're not really activating cortisol. As a matter of fact, studies have demonstrated that like low intensity exercise, like just going for a little walk and actually mobilizing fats can actually bring your cortisol levels down. So going for like easy cardio or possibly even easy resistance training is not a bad idea. I'm just talking about having some intense workouts right smack dab in the middle. If you can, you know, smudge them over to the beginning or towards the end. Okay, now, 
one thing that's very important, regardless, whether you worked out at the beginning or you worked out at the end, your protein synthesis is going to remain elevated, okay? It's going to, your muscle protein synthesis is going to be hungry for protein. That whole process is gonna be hungry for protein for 24, 48 hours plus. It is imperative that you get high quality protein when you do finally break your fast because your body is going to be like a sponge for it. The protein I recommend, I usually recommend either a clean protein shake or uh, also using some kind of lean meat that you can get. I put a link down below for ButcherBox. For those of you that really like some good lean steaks, like some lean filet or anything like that, so there's a link down below. ButcherBox delivers meat to your doorstep, so it makes it super easy. I can't tell you how many times I've ordered a ButcherBox box while I'm fasting when I'm super hungry, and then I'm like, oh gosh, this is too much food. Anyway, point is, there's a link down below for you to try it out. So you use that link, and you can get meat delivered to your doorstep that'll work perfect for when you're in your eating window of your fast to supplement the amount of protein that you need to get in, really get those levels up. And a big thank you to ButcherBox for the continued support. So again, you can use that link. So ground beef, they've got lean fillets, they've got New Yorks, they've got ribeyes, they've got chicken, they've got poultry, they've got everything you can think of. Also sockeye salmon, wild cod, you name it, all brought to your doorstep. And it ends up being pretty dang economical. So use that link down below in the description. So now you need to look at this big picture of, well, what about as I fast more? And as I get more adapted to intermittent fasting and prolonged fasting, does that change? Well, yeah, that's kind of wild. And one of the things that you can do, and this is, you know, yes, it does involve you going out and getting something that can monitor your uh, heart rate variability, like an aura ring or a whoop strap or anything like that. But if you look at what's called your heart rate variability, you can determine how adapted you are to a fast. So listen to this all the way, even if you don't get something to measure HRV, okay? Because it's still very helpful and there's other ways you could probably track. Let's give an example. If I were to do my very first 24 hour fast today, there's a good chance that I would have a stress response that would trigger my heart rate variability to get worse. Heart rate variability is how you measure uh, your sympathetic nervous system. It's the best way that we can. It measures the intervals between your heartbeats, okay? So when I fast, I have this just worsening of my heart rate variability because my body's stressed. Well, if I were to continue to practice fasting for the next year, and then one year from now, did that same 24 hour fast and measured my HRV, I would find my body is much more adapted to this and I have much less of a negative response, right? Well, that would indicate that because I am not as high levels of cortisol, because my HRV is not as bad, I probably can get away with working out a little bit more intensely in the middle of my fast without less of an, that much of an issue. Because the big driver that we're paying attention to here is the cortisol. Okay, I know there's other things that we have to look at, like oxidative stress and all this. All that I think your body can overcome. I think your body can overcome the stressors from a workout during a fast because it can really upregulate glutathione, it can upregulate you know, superoxide dismutase, all these kind of inherent antioxidants that can fight off the free radical damage with that. But one thing that we just don't have the ability to counteract a lot of when we're not eating at least, is cortisol. So we don't want to drive that up, and HRV is a great indicator of where our cortisol levels are. So if you're more advanced, measure your cortisol levels or measure your HRV with Aura or Whoop or one of these other things. Even Garmin has some abilities to do that. And see, okay, here I am on a 24-hour fast, here I am on another 24-hour fast, I'm getting better. And wait until you can actually see a response become attenuated during that fast, and you'll find now I'm good to go and working out whenever I really want to work out. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and remember to pay attention to your heart rate variability if you can. I'll see you tomorrow.